Hey there, welcome to another Raspberry Pi operating system install. Today we're going to install Diet Pi. <clears throat> Diet Pi is a minimal Raspberry Pi operating system that allows you to install software packages easily, simply, and efficiently by having a lot of the configuration settings already done for you. I did a video on this before. But that was about a year ago, and I've been informed that there have been a lot of changes. A lot of things need to be uh, gone over since then. Um, so we're going to install this today, and we are going to take a look at what is going on and what might have changed. So basically, this is one of the important screens. Uh, Diapi, lightweight, 400 meg in size, uh, three times lighter than Raspberry Lite, so it's pretty stripped down. Uh, low process memory footprint and maximum performance and that's what we're after when we're trying to install uh, not necessarily a fully featured operating system but an uh, operating platform that allows us to install other applications so uh, if you click on the features it brings you to this section of the page and uh, I've opened these in separate pages but they're all from the main page so I'll put a link to this in the description so uh, it's lightweight, it's optimized for CPU and RAM usage, and keeps your single board computer running at maximum potential as a simple interface to use, uh, some software you can install, and I will show the list. I think I got this on this screen right here so we can see that's if there's anything that's changed or anything notable that's in the list. Uh, there is a configuration for it. Uh, it will do backups, has logging system choices, so you can choose different ways to set up system logging so you can use RAM log or RSS log or anything really. Um, has its own update system which is nice because I don't believe when we installed it before it actually would update itself. So that's cool. And there is a lot of automation and scripts. We'll go down to the downloads. While we are only doing this for the Raspberry Pi, this is also available for these single board computers which will give you the same or similar effect. So that works out pretty well. There's a nice community that would answer any of your questions you might have. So definitely stop by there if you have any issues, and they will be happy to help you out. So let's look at the software list. <coughs> and I like how now they've actually got it in an interface so that you can see it, rather than it, where it was before, where it was just a posting on the forum that you had to go to, and you had to dig through a list. So now you can actually look in here and see what's available. So I guess we got, these are the ready to run applications that you can install. Um, available software is dependent on device and CPU architecture. Some items may be unavailable. Uh, you can run the following command to list disabled items right there. So if you're wondering what's disabled in here, that would be the command that you would run to find out. And that would be on the device you were running it on, so it would tell you what it was not able to run. So let's let's break this down by section, and we'll go over these. Miscellaneous software, uh, folding at home, that's useful. I know a lot of people are interested in that, and this is a quick way to get it set up and running. Printing, you've got Octoprint, which I've used before, and I actually think I did a video on how to install Octoprint using, Raspberry, using uh, Diet Pi. Uh, I also did a video on installing Octoprint by itself. That worked out pretty well. I still use it to this day, even though my 3D printers are not running exactly as much as they used to be. And uh, you got your cups set up so that you can do print sharing, and that's awesome. Cloud printing. Uh, there is a DNS server with PyHole, which uh, my intention was before to set up PyHole and also set up OpenVPN on Raspberry Pi and see how it performed, but I never got around to doing that. Uh, I really need to do that and make a video about it because I know there's a lot of people that are curious about it. I just have not had an opportunity to change my VPN over from what I'm currently using, and I don't really have much need for an ad blocker, so setting that up is not really my priority. If there is any interest in it, I'd definitely be happy to show you how to do it. It's not ter terribly hard to do. Uh, we got some file servers here, Samba server, uh, FTPD, NFS, and an FTP server, some web stack servers. These are all pretty popular. 
security. Uh, this will pick up when somebody's trying to break into your stuff and ban the IP address based on certain rules. Very handy to have. Stats, you can run these statistical programs to monitor certain things and they all have different functions that you would want to check out, but generally you would know what you were needing if you were setting one of these up. So it wouldn't be something you just want to set up for funsies. Uh, remote access, you can have uh, remote it or virtual here. That might be handy. I might look into that someday. Uh, some hardware projects that you can set up using DietPy, which is actually kind of cool because I don't remember them having this before, to where you could do the voice kit for the Google and uh, things of that nature. So setting up uh, the Google Voice kit. This is a good way to do it without having to fiddle with installing the operating system and installing the software yourself. It comes fairly pre-configured in here already. Some home automation, the home assistant. Uh, I did look into that, but I really wanted something a little more pow powerful for the home automation, so I did not bother installing it. You can set up a wi two different types of Wi-Fi wi wi hotspots. Depending on your needs, you can set up the Wi-Fi Wi-Fi hotspot, or you can set up the Tor Wi-Fi wi -Fi hotspot. Um, some forums, WordPress, cloud backups. Uh, own cloud was something I looked into at one time, so that was something that was interesting. So I thought maybe I might set that up someday, but I never had an opportunity or reason to actually set it up. But who knows what the future may bring. Camera software, RPI cam control, I think this is something you could use with some of the security monitoring, but you'd probably want to use Motion Eye because it probably sounds like it has more motion capture in it. I haven't used either of these before. But I uh, was thinking about setting up some Pi Zeros for, uh, uh, with a tra motion tracking setup with some software to capture images from cameras around my house. <clears throat> some different emulators you can set up. This is an easy way to set up an emulator. Uh, you can set up Steam Client, uh, Tyrion, which is a fairly popular game, I guess. I have not really thought to play it. Mine OS, Amiberry, and DXX Rebirth. Some download tools. <clears throat> These are mostly uh, torrent and, FT er, torrent and uh, FTP type s systems. Uh, you can set up a couch potato setup, which I've actually thought was pretty interesting. Couch potato and sonar and radar to, to set those up. Those are actually pretty intense to set up sometimes. They can be a little confusing. So getting it sort of pre-configured in advance can be very helpful. So I don't know how helpful the couch potato install is on this. But any options it could set up by default that would be help you get this set up would probably speed up your process. Media systems, of course they got Kodi. A bunch of Airsonic stuff. Uh, looks like any kind of video push or audio push. You could set up Plex. There's some good ones. <clears throat> so we got some web audio interfaces and web and media interfaces. <clears throat> Should get you going. Excuse me. Sorry for my voice. And we got some uh, BNC software. Kind of useful. A bunch of different desktops. logging systems so this probably fall under the uh, monitoring as well and SSH servers <clears throat> so if we go to uh, let's go to Kodi because I'm pretty familiar with Kodi and if we click on it let's see what kind of information this interface gives us as opposed to what the other one did uh, how do I use the software once it's installed all-in-one <coughs> pros all-in-one feature rich media center cons to be announced the only media center player you'll ever need does not tell what version you're installing but I'm hoping it, it would be the latest and it would keep itself updated so that would be nice I wonder if there's uh, Plex is pretty good and again no no version number but it does have an overall rating and a performance rating whereas compared to Kodi Kodi has an overall and performance rating maxed out I think they pretty much got that locked down so they know how that works out. I was just curious if it would tell you which version or which build or whatnot, <laughs> if it was the uh, public version or if it was the one of the uh, upcoming versions. Anyway, we downloaded it from that page. There is our image file, which is, looks like it's using Debian Stretch. 
which is a step up from what it was using before. And we have, as you can see, burned this to our flash drive. So let's go ahead and get it set up and running. And I used Etcher for this today. Uh, there are three videos I made on how to burn image files. I will put a link in the description down below if you have any questions about how to do that. Uh, I don't need to do that, go over that every single video. So anytime <clears throat> you need to look into it, you can just go down there and check out those one of those three videos, whichever one tickles your fancy. Uh, in this case, I used Etcher. I would probably have used Rufus, but I wanted to try Etcher out today and burning this image, and it worked fine, as you can see. And again, if you're a Linux user, you probably already know how to use DD, so I'm not going to insult your intelligence by running through that. If you want, I can, but there hasn't been much draw for me to make a Linux video on how to burn image files to an SD card. And if you are using a Mac, <coughs> you have my apologies. Not because you're using Mac, but my apologies that my MacBook currently does not have a functional SD card reader. So I am unable to demonstrate how to do this on a Mac. I thought I was going to be able to do it, but my Mac will not read SD cards any longer. And I unfortunately do not see myself being able to get one anytime soon, or get a hold of one even, to make a video on how to burn SD cards. So unfortunately, you'll have to look elsewhere for those. But let's move on to the first boot and what it comes up to as it boots up. And as you can see, <clears throat> it's a pretty standard first boot for a Linux system. I have to kind of trade things around here. I actually only have one mouse available because the rest of them I had to actually use in order for uh, Chrome Remote Desktop to work on a couple of the machines I added to my network properly. Otherwise, it doesn't really show the screen. resizing the file system, and away we go. Alright, <clears throat> and this would be a pretty standard boot for this on the first boot. So, kind of getting an idea of what to expect and how long to expect it to take. This would give you kind of an impression rather than me speeding through it just wanted to show you kind of what you could expect on a Raspberry Pi 3 so that you could uh, know what kind of time frame you're looking at so you can exercise patience if you have to so as you can see here the default login is root with the password of diet pi tells you that on the boot so that works out pretty well we go. <clears throat> now we have root access. All right. There's our license. Is my mouse working yet? No. Tab, <coughs> enter, and now we're past the license, and now it's going to do updates, which is pretty awesome because I always forget to do the updates, but it's doing them for us, so that's great. It's all the package repositories have been updated and maybe it'll do a yep <clears throat> we're all patched up <clears throat> I think before you didn't have you had to do that yourself so that was that was one of those things that I had to walk everybody through when we were setting it up because there were a lot of patches that it didn't have and running the patch as soon as it hit the desktop <clears throat> updated it to the current version, but it looks like this one is more automated, so that's a good thing. Because honestly, I prefer my computer to know when it should update and take care of that itself, in most cases. There are a couple of machines I have that are never to be rebooted, so I have updates turned off on those and handle them manually. However, <clears throat> in, in this case, 
<clears throat> I would like it to be current and correct. Obviously, until I put something on it that cannot be rebooted without intervention. And again, we're doing this in real time so that you can see about how long you should have to wait for this to boot up the first time. Uh, I had considered running this as like a 4x speed up, but I want you to have a realistic expectation of how long to wait before you think you have an issue. Uh, there are a couple points where it pauses, as you can see, <clears throat> and some people may interpret that as the system not doing anything. If I was speeding through this, it would probably give you the impression that your system was having an issue, where it isn't actually. It's just processing some information. You have to remember the Raspberry Pi is not the most powerful computer in the world, so therefore it does take a little bit more time and effort for it to accomplish some things. <clears throat> we can opt in for the survey, which we are. Well, we'll go ahead and do it. It really doesn't matter. We're going to flash this again in a day anyway. Uh, Diet Pi has been updated to the latest version. System will now reboot. Once complete, log in and resume the setup. So that's awesome. So let's go ahead and let it reboot. <clears throat> and now you can see the second boot and how long it should take. And this should give you an uh, idea of how long your system should take to start up. And that's all there is to it. Okay, and now that we're here, <clears throat> I do not want to adjust the global password for the installations. However, I would highly suggest that you do this. So there may actually be some value in doing it. So let's let's go ahead and adjust the password. And now let's make a new password. And I have chosen the incredibly popular password for my password. And there we go. Zero console is enabled. We'd like to disable it. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and disable security console because we won't be needing it. You can leave it open if you definitely needed it open, but I do not for this sake. All right, so here is our menu on how we actually manipulate and configure the software. You don't have a desktop. There is no mouse support at this point. So we can select the help which will take us through and give us documentation and guides. The configuration tool, which will allow us to configure all the options on here. Search for software title to install. Select Diapi optimized software for installation. Select the additional software for installation. Uh, turn on SSH. Set it up as a file server. Set up the log system web server preference and this gives us our preference of what we want to set up for each I would prefer Apache as my web server but for the sake of this demonstration it really doesn't matter uh, there's where the user data location is stored it is storing it on the SSD it's telling you that <clears throat> so therefore you know what it is that you want where you want to save the data if you want to save it on your SD card or if you want to save it on an actual drive connected to the Raspberry Pi. So let's select DiaPi Optimized Software. And this is the interface that you use to select what software out of that list that you want to install. So you can pick any of these, and it will actually go through. Let's, let's do uh, Spotify Web Connect, just so we can have something. And then tab to get to OK. And then you go down and select install. And <clears throat> it's going to install the RAM log and Spotify Web Connect. I don't have Spotify Premium, so we're not actually going to configure it or do anything with it. I just wanted you to see what it was like when it installed the software. All right, and it is going to install. And this would be the installation process of installing an application actually two applications that we selected, one for the log files and one for a software package we actually picked. 
and this should be relatively painless and go along just like we would think it would. It installs all dependencies for you. It's already ready to go and fairly configured. You just need to type in the information it requests and you'll definitely be on the way to doing whatever it is you're att attempting to do by using this package software to install a program. And there's our install complete. And it wants to reboot again, so we'll allow it to reboot again. And as you can see, it does a delay, and then it shuts down all the interfaces and everything, and restarts. Depending on what you've installed, the next startup could be longer, so use patience as required. It's usually not best to turn these off. while they're booting because it can cause problems. All right, so this is how we get around. There's Diapi Launcher, Diapi Config, Diapi Software, and HTOP for Resource Monitor. And typing in them in gives us information about what we're looking at. And this would be the config, which was pretty standard Linux configuration on a, on a Raspberry Pi. You can select a lot of different things. It has more options than your standard Raspberry Pi configuration. Oops, just there. But as you can see, it gives us some choices of what we can and can't do. And you can set these as you like. and they will get you where you need to go. And these should all be dependent on your installation and definitely something that can help you out and get going. All right, so that is the basics of the new Diet Pi, which is much more streamlined than the original version that we installed. because the original version we installed required us to do updates manually, change configuration settings, uh, a lot of things that were a little bit different. But this is a much more refined process. Uh, if you are newer to a Raspberry Pi and trying to install something, I would definitely recommend this as an option that you would want to try. Let me put my keyboard down. Kind of at a premium for space here, so. If you are a pro at a Raspberry Pi, this is definitely a way to push out applications to Raspberry Pi quickly, have baseline setup with the skeleton settings all in place to save you time in doing so. I have many of these devices in my house doing many jobs. If I ever need to reinstall any of them, this is definitely an easy way for me to throw the software on here, throw the Diet Pi operating system on here, click a couple buttons, and I've got a mostly functional version of whatever it is I'm trying to do all ready to go. Uh, and then those applications run based on different parameters for each application. I really can't go into all those. They're probably in the forum settings if you're looking for something specific. But check out the website down in the link in the description and it will take you there and you can check out everything you need to know. Like I said, the forums for these were really great the last time I was there and I really enjoyed looking through them. I'm sure they haven't changed. I'm sure they're still wonderful and they'll get you everything you need to know about the operating system or the applications that are installed within. I know there were a lot of guides on how to configure things, but a lot of the grunt work of setting this up has been taken away, which actually makes it much more useful to me at least and to a lot of people. I could see where this would be a much more friendly settings. And I also see where it was mentioned in the comments in my previous video where a lot of people were saying you don't need to do those things now. Uh, I wasn't exactly sure what those things were that you didn't need to do anymore. But now I'm seeing there's a lot of things like updates and things like that that you don't need to do. So definitely a pro, a win. Uh, they definitely took a lot of the things into consideration people were saying and implemented them. Well worth your time to check out if you're exploring the world of Raspberry Pi. Take a minute and uh, flash out Diet Pi. Take a look at it, and I'm sure you'll find something useful to do with it. Anyway, until the next video, that's it for now. Check out the next Raspberry Pi operating system install coming up soon, probably tomorrow.
Anyway, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.